Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jason. Uh, here I share my adventure learning 3D art. Recently I have been really into fantasy stylized art like you find in World of Warcraft, League of Legends, uh, Heroes of the Storm, and I've been trying to make some 3D props and assets of my own in a little bit of that stylized fashion. And along the way I ran into some issues that really frustrated me and I noticed uh, some other people have been experiencing similar issues so I thought I'd uh, share some of the process and things I've learned to hopefully help you avoid some of said issues because it can be pretty frustrating sometimes but anyway we're here in uh here in blender right and Let's just say you've you've created your low poly model and then you took it into like I for example take it in a ZBrush uh, but you could sculpt it in Blender if, if you use Blender. Um, it really doesn't matter what uh, software you're using um, but you you've taken your time and you've you've done you followed some tutorials and you retopologized the your your high poly. <clears throat> And then you take it in a substance painter and try to bake your maps out and just it looks okay but it doesn't look quite right you know like there's like like weird shading and shadows on it uh and that's if you got your uvs right um i can show you the uvs on this i i do an okay job i think it you uvs take a long time to do but um let me uh, go on edit mode here. That's all. I packed all the UVs here in Blender. That's definitely something you want to make sure you get uh, done well. It's worth taking the time to uh, to pack it in there as tightly as you can and make sure nothing's overlapping and some things aren't going to be perfect, but you get it in there as well as you can and use up as much of the the uv space as you can is one thing i've figured out um or it seems to work and i think uh from what i've read and seen that's a good practice this looks really wonky because i i triangulated my mesh like you can see it here that's another thing you really want to do before you export your models to be baked in substance painter you want to triangulate it uh, because apparently each software package kind of triangulates it in its own way. Uh, but if you do it beforehand, it doesn't, and it keeps the triangulation you have. And that way, whenever you bring it from one package to another, the, the faces don't change. Like, you know, for example, right here, these are all kind of going like that. And if you bring it into Substance Painter, it might make them go this way. And that can just uh, really mess your bakes up. Or like when you apply your textures in another software package, it doesn't quite look right. So those are some things I figured out that you definitely want to do. Another thing when you start baking in Substance Painter is uh, you don't want to leave your mesh as one mesh. Like right now, this is this is one mesh, right? Um, or one object, I should say, with multiple meshes. And you don't want to import it that way into Substance Painter uh, because when you bake it, what happens is it puts a cage. Uh, let me pick this guy here picks a cage for each item right and you know let's say it it's like a force field that's wrapped around each mesh in your object and if those those force fields intersect with each other then it it can pick up information from one mesh and transfer it onto the other mesh uh their texture bakes and it, it just looks off if you if you've ever encountered that you definitely uh, know what i'm talking about so one solution that i've seen is people uh give everything a, a different material you know and they 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 name each 
mesh by material. But the problem I found with that is when you bake your textures, it works okay, but then you have a bunch of separate texture maps for your one object, and, and that sucks because then you've taken it into Photoshop and composite all those maps together, and, and that's just a, a whole nother nightmare in itself. Anyways, what you want to do is you want to duplicate your project. Like right now, I have this my book, uh, my generic spell book. I just call it, have it called Book UV. And then I made a duplicate. And I took that duplicate and I split it into separate parts. For example, this is the cover low. And then I have this part. Just kind of, these are, I call the, the bindings low. And that's another thing you have to make sure you do and uh, kind of pay attention to is your naming convention has to match. So make sure it says bindings underscore low, or you can make it say LP uh, because in Substance Painter, it likes to see, that's how it'll recognize its counter high poly part. Like for example, we'll go here on the high poly. I have the bindings high and you could just put H or HP. Some people just put HP or LP for high poly and low poly, but whatever naming convention you choose, uh, make sure it's consistent. You know, like I have the pages as yeah, pages high. And then in the low poly, I have them in, sorry page is low so just make sure they're all sep each part is separated into its own object so for example I have one two three four different objects and the the idea is you want to separate them if they're going to collide so anything that's going to collide you don't want them to be included in the same object uh, for example i have this and this if i would have included these bolts as part of this object then the cage or force field that would have been created when it bakes would intersect with this one's force field and that's no bueno no good you don't want that to happen so don't so don't do that <clears throat> so once you've got it all separated and uh, you've got your naming and uh, objects labeled accordingly you want to select all of them in blender anyway uh, I'm pretty sure it works the same in most other 3d programs but you select all your objects and you export it as an FBX and another thing if you're using blender make sure you hit selected objects only um, otherwise it tries to export all your stuff and I've already got those set up I got my 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 book low and my book high here let's just hit cancel and you would uh you know you of course you would do the same thing with your high poly you just select everything and then export it and it's FBX and again make sure you check that selected objects because it is it can take a really long time uh, to stop doing the export if you it exports everything in the file I think so it, it can sometimes it'll crash even but not very often it really doesn't do that very often so let's uh, hop into substance painter so we can get a better idea of how that ends up working I'm going to start a new file and with if you're going to be taking this back into blender to to render in cycles you want to do OpenGL, and we'll just do this as a 2k file and you select your object okay and you don't need to add a material in blender because uh substance just adds its own generic default material and i think you can just click on this and rename it we'll just call this a uh, generic 
spellbook. Generic spellbook. Okay. So you have your generic spellbook in here for your uh, level one character. You want to delete that. And if you try to do anything now, nothing's going to happen because there's there's no there's no texture maps for it to work with, right? So you go to your texture set settings, and you go to bake mesh. Um, if you're watching this video, you've probably got a fairly okay understanding of of how to at least move around and and use substance painter. Um, and it's always a good idea to just do a quick test bake. So I'll uncheck everything by hitting this none button. Now just do the normal and and make sure you bring your high poly. And I've done that a couple times and wondered what in the world was going on. But um, yeah, make sure you got that selected. And the frontal distance and rear distance are the distance that it goes like the cage goes around your object and within the object, like if it was a tube or if, you know what I mean? It's basically how far in or out the, the shield or bubble or cage goes around each object to search for the, uh, the normals. I kind of think of it as, as a force field around your object and anything that's not in the force field like if, if my finger was sticking out of the force field, gets cut off and is gone. So you don't want anything getting cut off your model. So make sure you have that cage set right. So I found that uh, like 1.0.1317 works well. And I usually leave the bottom one how it is. Um, another important thing when you're doing it this way is make sure you hit by mesh name. That way, for example, the low poly the, the cover low will match up with the cover high that way it knows to make sure the cage matches up with those and we're not going to do an anti-aliasing right now so we'll just do a quick bake to make sure this works out right and i think that looks pretty good that looks pretty solid okay and now we can do a real bake so we'll go none, hit all, and we'll do this one at uh, 4K. And yeah, we'll leave the cage the same. There's a couple things uh, you need to be aware of, like the ambient occlusion. You want to hit that one and hit uh, by mesh name as well. And the thickness, I don't really know if we need that one, but I'm just going to bake it for the sake of it. And I think, oh, and the ID map, you want to make sure that's on vertex color. Uh, I set uh, the vertex color in ZBrush and then use that as a color ID map. And I'll show you what that means in a, in a little bit here. So this is going to probably take a minute, so bear with me. I don't have the most uh, powerful computer. Most of this stuff I learned uh, recently because I've been building a little stylized diorama and um, along the way I, I figured out the do, some of the do's and don'ts either through trial and error and watching tutorials. Um, but if you're interested in seeing any of that, I got all of that posted uh, on my YouTube channel there. It's, 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 uh, it was all live streamed. Uh, I usually live stream most of this stuff. And um, yeah, check it out. Let me know what you guys think. If you like it, hit that like button. Uh, if you find it helpful and you want to see the, the rest of the project coming along, hit that subscribe and bell icon. And that way you'll uh, get to see how it all works out. I think we're done. All right. That looks pretty good. Level one warlock spellbook.
and then you can uh let's see the hockey f1 yeah and see how it's uh looking in the 2d view here i guess i, sh I could put a texture on it real quick oh let me show you an example of using the uh color ID map so let's see leather leather weathered let's get that one that'll be a, uh, make a lot of sense so it goes on your whole mesh or your whole object right and that's not what we want so you just right click add a black mask and since we have a color ID we hit a f2 here and then you have a color ID mask right click you will pick color and see how I have all these crazy colors uh, those are the different meshes or yeah different meshes within my object and I can just click on this brown part boom and it's only applied to that part such a time saver I guess we could go ahead and just throw a couple quick ones on some of the other things here um, how about this bronze bronze same thing oh yeah well we don't want that on the uh we don't want that on the rope and the pages the rope the stitching excuse me color selection right click now we'll do that and then uh just kind of close that out and let's see for these bolts how about we choose like a Uh, iron stylized uh, I don't like that one let's go with uh, let's go with one of these steel dark aged steel there we go and we'll do the same thing add a black mask color selection when you do the color selection you can pick more than one color so for example i'll pick the these bolts here and then i'll pick these little ones on the corner parts here and then boom there it is and then last but not least let's see we'll do the the threads that's probably like a fabric fabric burlap we use burlap let's see what that does mask with color selection and i guess we could do something for the pages i just use one of these regular materials plastic diamond though uh plastic grainy and then i'll just change the color make it a uh, off white kind of and this is no metal and i don't need any normal information Ooh, could probably make that a little uh little darker huh no let's try a smart material that's that's looking too weird um but anyways yeah that's how you utilize the uh color id map There we go, looks sort of okay. And you can kind of, you can use this rollout here. Is that color ID? You can see all your other maps, uh, normal. 
But basically that color ID really helps you, helps illustrate what, why you separate it into multiple objects as opposed to having them all in one object. So just to reiterate, you in Blender or in your 3D program where you created your low poly and then you did your high poly sculpt in ZBrush or Blender, wherever, and then you brought it back in and you did your retopology and you UV'd it. Before you bring it into Substance Painter, this, uh, this workflow anyway, just make a, after you've UV'd your low poly or your retopo mesh, make a copy of it, throw it on a different layer, split it up into different parts. For example, here I got cover, bindings, bolts, pages. And then you do the same thing with your high poly and just make sure they match up. Now I got my high poly cover, high poly bolts, high poly bindings, high poly page, and then export each uh, mesh, high poly and low poly, separately, uh, but each one as an FBX. Make sure you select all, like box select. Uh, in Blender, you can just hit A. And if you are using Blender, make sure you hit that, uh, that selected objects. I can't tell you how annoying it is when you don't hit that because it exports, takes forever, first of all, and it exports like everything in your file, your blend file. Yeah, so uh, and then you bring it in a Substance Painter, bake out the maps, and I'll go back into texture settings and uh, do a test bake at a low resolution uh, with just the normals, just to get a quick idea of what it's looking like. And if it looks okay, then you can um, go ahead and bake at the real resolution you want to use and apply all the other maps. And make sure you set ambient occlusion to same mesh, thickness to same mesh, and for the match, always by mesh name. And, and make sure you input your, your high poly. Like I said, I've forgotten that and, and wondered what in the world was going on. That's just stupid user error. Yeah, uh, that's about it, guys. Hopefully, this will help you avoid some of the frustration that I ran into. You know, for example, I like I had parts where like like the uh, this would be bleeding into the cover because I imported it as one mesh, so the cages around them were blending together. It was a it was a friggin' friggin' nightmare. Sure, some of you probably encountered that. So that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, hit that like button, and if you want to uh, see more, hit the subscribe and bell icon. That way, you'll uh, be up to date every time I post new content. Uh, like I said, I typically stream live about three to four days a week, but I'm going out of town to visit some family, so I won't be won't be having any new content soon um but yeah stay tuned and uh thanks for stopping by